All right, so we're going to look at some code today that a programmer or developer might encounter in an interview. Uh, so this is going to be found on the website and also it can be found right here. And so we are going to look at code that calculates the average of an array. So the idea here is that you have an array for an example that I'm just going to say and make this up equals 1, 2, and 3. So obviously this is 1 plus 2, so 3 plus 6, and then divided by 3, so the average is 2. That completely makes sense, right? And you know, you can open up a calculator and test this out quickly. So we got our calculator here. And we can do 1 plus 2 plus 3, then divided by the, the number of the array. So the average is 2. So we're right on that. But you know, so this is an example. We want to make code that's always going to take any list of an array and, um, oops, did that one backwards, and finds the array. Uh, the average. Now once again the code that I'm going to do um, there is thousands of ways to skin a cat and you might have a completely different way to find this and that's perfectly fine this is just how I did it and once again we're not going to be using anything any type of logic that's already made for us in uh, JavaScript so for example no dot lengths to find the lengths of the array and none of that. So basically we are going to do this old school as if there was nothing already built for us. Which is what you would probably find when you, uh, when, you add, when you do something. So when you go for an interview. So let's start with just an array. We'll do array 1 and we'll say that equals and we'll go with our test 1 and then we'll do array 2 and we'll put some other numbers in here. We'll do three, two, three, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and we'll make one more for fun that has a longer list in there. So we'll do five, six, two, eleven, seventy-one, and four, and a hundred. So there you go. So we want to make a program that's going to be able to crunch all these numbers. So if I'm making a program for this, this screams function to me. This screams, hey, we want to definitely make something that we can pass in a bunch of ar uh, arguments and be able to get all that stuff back. So we're going to make a function here. And once again, the way that um, it's set up is you don't need to pass anything in because this is JavaScript and they do scope completely different. So we don't need to pass anything in because this is actually declared in the global space. So this average functions will have access to it. So it's all up to your preference whether you want to pass in an argument here. What I'm probably going to do is pass in an argument. We'll do that later. So what we're looking at is we definitely want something to hold the length because remember we're not doing anything length and we're going to initialize that to zero and also we would want some type of sum so we're going to do sum and we're going to initialize that to zero so my idea here is that I need to find the sum of what's in the array and then I also need to find out the length because that's how you uh, calculate average and then we can actually do average now remember your naming convention here you could uh, it's dangerous to do this because you have a function that has the same name as a variable so be so we're gonna do average array so that it doesn't get confused and we're going to initialize that to zero. So we've already initialized our variables. So these are all ready to go. So now 
What I need here is something that's going to keep running while there's still numbers. And obviously a for loop is a great idea. Now, once again, you could have let Sublime help you, but it's good to not let it help you and type it out on your own so you uh, get the idea of it. So we would want to initialize this to zero because we want to start at zero because uh, remember how this works is that arrays start at zero. So zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So that's where we want to go. Now for loops can look a little funky. Take a look at this. Notice that I did not put a parameter in here. Remember, you would usually put a parameter that maybe looks like this. So you can do array dot length. And then basically we're saying, hey, stop at the length of the array. So at this one, we say stop at three. I'm sorry, stop at two, stop at three, stop at so on and so forth. But we're not using a, le a length. We're going to do that all old school. So you can actually totally leave this out like this because we don't know when we need to stop. So right now, we don't know when to stop, so we need to tell the computer when to stop. And we're going to do that in the next statement. So now we need an if statement. So now we're going to do if, and we're going to need an else as well, and I'll show you why. Uh, what I'm typing here, this is my own convention, this is just so that I know what curly brace goes with what curly brace and when you're dealing with huge lines of code this really really helps. And, and so what we're going to do is we're going to put the name of the array. And I'm going to pass in a value here. So I'm going to, when I, when I call this function I'm going to pass in a value. So I'm going to pass an array. Now remember that the default value of an if statement is if it's true it will go into here. So an interesting fact if it's not defined if it's not defined it will equate to false. So for example when it goes into this first value it's gonna say wait it is true because it exists. It's going to go into the second value. Oh, it is true because it exists. It's going to go into the third value. It is true because it exists. And then it's going to try to go into the fourth value. Wait a second, that's undefined. It doesn't exist. And I can I can show you this here quickly um, by just console logging out array array one, and we can console log four. And once again, I'm I'm doing I'm running this through Node. Um, once again, a fancy little function right here that I have an alias so that I don't have to deal with such a lot long lines of code here. So it just goes to this caret symbol. And so we're just going to run it with node. This just so I just skip the HTML. Once again, you can go through HTML. It won't won't affect anything at all. Now notice that I got it undefined because it doesn't exist, right? So this is a good way. So this would actually equate to false if it's undefined. So now we have a way to know when to break. So if it is undefined, it's going to go into this else statement and then we're going to say, wait a second, okay, there's nothing left of this thing. So we're going to go ahead and break. So now we're done and that will break out of this for loop. So right now what we're going to do is every time that we go through this, we are going to increment this just like that. So may, meaning it's going to be, it's going to go through once, it's going to be bam, it's going to be now one, and then two, and then three, and then four, so on and so forth. And that's what we want. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kill, uh, kill two birds with one stone, and we're going to take the sum is going to be equal to plus equals the array just like that. So every time it goes through it's going to be zero so then if this is array one sorry that was array, if I this was array one 
then what's going to happen is it's going to go through and it's going to be like okay it still exists so we're going to go into here length is going to go up to one now and now it's going to be like okay it's going to be one plus this this is the exact same way as writing it as this this is just a shortcut once again if you like writing it out that is totally your preference you can totally do that once again everybody codes differently and we're gonna be good so right now let's test some stuff out so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna call the function and we're gonna pass in array one and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna console log these as they come out so let's see what happens here oh let me go ahead and take this out because it's not necessary all right so it only went through there one time let's see what's going on let me go ahead and take this out because this isn't necessary there we go so that was screwing it up a little bit um, I probably should have written it like this then it would have worked but this is the real thing so we can go ahead and do this so now that we got that, now this works. So actually, so let's make this a little easier to read. And then we'll go ahead and run this all right there we go so now the sum is six that looks good and the length is three that looks good I like it so now what we need is the logic of what's gonna happen here so what we need to do is we need to take that and divide it so what we're gonna do is just simply do that. So our for loop ends here. So I'm gonna now take this and now I'm gonna take average is going to equal the sum divided by length. And then what we're gonna do is console log this out And it's always nice just to put a little description of what you're console logging out. The average is, and then concatenate it so like that. And let's run this one more time. So the average is two. That's looking good. I like that. So there we go. And now we just have a simple function that's always going to return the average. So what we can do here is we can actually change this to two and then three, call them three times, and there you go. The average is 107, uh, 199, average is seven for this one, and the average is uh, right there. So there you go. And so we've just made a, oh no, that's some, Never mind. Oh, here it is, this is what I'm looking for. Average of the third is this, average of the second is this, average of the first is this. So now I have made a very powerful function that will always return the average of any array that I pass it in. And just, you know, just to show you another in instance here, um, you didn't have to do it this way. What we could have done is let's go ahead and take this out, take this out because we know it's working. And what we can do is actually a return statement here. You can do this on one line if you want. I sometimes don't like doing that it's not as easy to read so I'm going to return this and then var average one and now var average one is going to be equal to whatever gets returned uh, why is this so hard to type okay there it is
And then what we can do is just simply console log these babies out. Do some sublime magic. And there you go. Now we have all three of them right there. So, you know, once again, you could have console logged it here or you can return the thing. Returning it is very nice if you wanted to work with this average. Again, so now you have a variable that holds the average of the array. Very powerful thing if you want to do a return value. And that is how you find the average of an array. All right, thank you.